biomimicry anyway? Well, I guess the most basic definition of biomimicry is really the emulation of nature in solving human problems. As designers, we frequently look to nature for influences, whether it be texture or function or form. Uh, it can be any or all of the above. So I think in this video, what I'd like to do is really find a, an inspiration in nature and do some quick conceptualization, some quick ideation sketches really kind of keeping it rough, uh, but just using biomimicry to see what the potential is for generating multiple concepts. So for today's sketch, I've chosen the puffin, which has always been one of my favorite birds. I just think they're funny looking. Uh, they're colorful. They're soft and kind of round. They, they, they look like a clown, basically, in nature. But uh, they're just, I think they're a lot of fun. So even without thinking about the actual product that I'm going to be designing, I'm just going to be looking uh, at puffin uh, pictures and references. And I'm, I'm first of all going to just try to accurately or, you know, quasi accurately depict a, a puffin in, in my sketches. So I've laid out, as you've seen me do frequently, I've laid out uh, just the geometric forms, kind of ovals and circles that are representative of a puffin's body and head. And then I am kind of filling in from there, but I'm constantly working around the page. I'm not staying just purely on uh, one illustration. Uh, and that's from in all aspects, whether it's just the sketching part or if it's also uh, applying marker, you'll see me kind of working around and building it all up in, in layers. So these will be just puffins depicted in different uh, positions, different postures, different expressions. I'll just have to see what kind of products might lend themselves to this type of form. It could also be, you know, a particular age group, right? Is it, is it maybe a children's product? Uh, is it more appropriate as from a kind of a gestural fun standpoint? Um, maybe it could turn into a, a children's toy or uh, a nightlight, for instance. So just to kind of reiterate uh, the approach that I've taken here in laying out these puffin sketches, I, I'm trying to get as close to a full 360 view uh, as possible, right? Because the, the the product itself will need to explore not only just a, a side view or uh, a top view, but we, we need to know what's going to go on underneath. Um, is, is it, you know, an electrical product? Is it going to have a cord? Uh, is it going to have a battery compartment? Uh, again, we're not even close to knowing what the product's going to turn into yet. But at the same time, I'd like for, I'd like to have a full representation of the product in 360. So these sketches really allow me to kind of explore the characteristics of a puffin that might have a big influence on my actual design. I don't ultimately want a literal interpretation of a puffin. I want more of a gestural um, stance to the product. But at the same time, by by sketching out the puffins and looking at the references, reference photos, I'm able to kind of pick up on key elements, whether it's the orange in the beak whether it's the orange feet or the webbing of the feet uh, or the high contrast of its, uh, of its coat, the uh, black and the white. Uh, and so all of that will be taken into consideration in a final design. So at this point, I'm going to kind of move on now and see what I can extrapolate from having sketched the puffins out and I'm going to do some uh, 
interpretive sketches now, ones that maybe aren't quite as literal. Uh, they'll, they'll still reference the puffins, but I'm going to move towards kind of productizing a puffin, if that makes sense at all. Uh, and so I've got some small little gestural sketches I've started here on the right. Really, they're different. You can really quickly explore different postures and, and the influence that it has. Uh, the top sketch here that I'm working on, he's kind of slunched over a little bit. Uh, the next one down, he's looking up and uh, it's a little bit more inspirational. Then, you know, I've, I had, uh, they have very striking and distinctive eyes and coloration around their eyes. And in, in the case of the, the gesture drawing drawings on the right, I've just minimized that down to just a little crease that might be, that could actually just be a little molded in crease to, as, a, as an interpretation of the eye as opposed to being uh, literal. And again, these are intended to be very quick gestural sketches. This is not in in intended to be uh, a presentation level sketch. This is me uh, thinking on paper and trying to, to visualize different ideas uh, uh, two dimensionally. And so that's really the, the same exercise that uh, you all should be doing uh, on the next assignment. Uh, it will be based on biomimicry. So you can start exploring and thinking about what you would like to use. It could be uh, a botanical, it could be uh, an animal, insect, fish. So that will be totally up to you to basically productize a uh, influence from nature in sketch form. So now uh, I'm going to let the video roll and you can just watch as I kind of build this up. There'll be a little bit more uh, of just technique, sketch technique that you see, uh, ways to balance out the page with a vignette, uh, et cetera. And, and then ultimately I spend probably a, a fair amount of time really just cleaning things up and making it look neat and tidy. It's that level of precision that will be able to convince someone of its true potential.